Hey guys, as many of you on this channel will know, we are all about backups, backups, backups. You should be backing up your data early, often, and with great enthusiasm. But what do you do if you've got a hard drive that's failing, that's got data on it, that you haven't backed up? Well, in this multi-part series, we're going to take a look at a real-life example that's happened to me recently, and some of the tools and tricks that you can use to try and preserve some of the existing data, and maybe recover some of the data that's already been lost. So in this, the first part of the series, we're going to do the troubleshooting section. We're going to take a look at identifying the problem and then seeing what steps we would then uh, take from there by extrapolating out what the problem might be. First, a very quick disclaimer. This is not professional advice and you should not try this at home on data that you care about. If you've got data that you care about on a drive that is failing or has failed, you should bring it to a data recovery service and pay them money to recover it for you. I know that it's expensive, but the reason it's expensive is if you do this wrong, you might cause even further damage to the data, preventing any chance of recovery in the future whatsoever. So with that disclaimer out of the way, so my friend came to me and said, Steve, I've got this external hard drive. It was sitting on my desk and whilst I was using it, it fell off the desk. And now when I plug it into my computer or laptop, I'm not able to access any of my files and folders. This story gives us several key pieces of troubleshooting information. The first is that the root cause is probably the physical damage the drive sustained whenever it hit the ground. That limits our troubleshooting options quite a bit. The second is that the drive was in an external enclosure whenever it hit the ground. Most external enclosures have an adapter on the inside that adapts the SATA port on the hard drive to a USB port that can plug into your computer. So there's the potential here that the hard drive itself is not what's faulty, but the actual uh, enclosure itself. So the very first thing we're going to do is shut the drive from the enclosure and put it into a known good adapter where we can see whether or not the drive connects. In this case, I'm going to use an Inotech dual bay docking station. They're not a sponsor or affiliate of the channel in any way, shape or form. I just happen to like this particular product because it has an offline clone function, which we're going to demonstrate in the next video. So let's plug the drive in and see what we get. As soon as I plug in the drive, I get a lot more information about what the problem could be. So I can hear the drive spinning up, which is good news because I know that the drive is receiving power and it's attempting to spin. And the second piece of information I've got there is it seems to be spinning normally. I don't hear any sort of clicking, clacking or unusual noises coming from the drive, which is always a good sign, especially when we're dealing with uh, physical damage. The second portion is Windows prompts me to format the disk. So this is problematic because it means Windows is not recognizing the hard drive. Now it's going to ask me to format the disk and put on a disk format that it recognizes. But if I do that, I'm going to lose all of my existing information. So I'm just going to go ahead here and hit cancel. My preferred next step here is to open up the disk management tool. So you can find that tool by hitting the Windows taskbar and then searching for disk management. You'll get an option for create and format hard disk partitions, which is the one that we all want. We'll open that up here. So there's some good news here and some bad news. The good news is that Windows recognizes the problematic disk, it's disk three, and it's tried to assign it a drive letter, drive letter E. We knew that because of the initial prompt we got when we plugged it in, asking us to format drive E, which we declined. But it's always good when Windows recognizes your disk. It would be much more problematic for us if Windows didn't recognize it as a hard drive. The bad news is it recognizes an awful lot of unallocated space here, which is very unusual for an external drive. We wouldn't expect any of it to be unallocated. Usually the whole disk is being used. And the partition that it does recognize, the 430 gigabytes, it does see as healthy, the logical drive, it's showing up as raw fo format. So what is a raw format as opposed to NTFS or FAT32, any of those recognizable formats? Well, raw is not actually a format in and of itself. It's really just what Windows labels something when it cannot recognize the format that the drive is in. So what it's trying to tell us here is it doesn't understand what format the drive is in. That's not really great news. It means probably the partition table that contains all of the information, but the files, folders, and the structure of the drive on the drive itself has become damaged or corrupt. And we'll have to take a look at trying to recover that. We've come to the end of the investigation portion of our troubleshooting, and we've identified that the problem could be a faulty partition table on the logical drive itself, which is preventing Windows from reading the disk correctly. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to take a backup of the problematic drive so that we can try multiple tools and techniques to try and recover that partition table without any more fear of data loss. So go ahead and to the YouTube dance and maybe like, comment, and especially subscribe if you want to catch the next update. And I will catch you guys on the flip side.